Hello everyone, my name is Jordan Petty, and I will be presenting my topic for the research paper. Over the course of the semester, I have researched Thomas Nast, one of the most renowned illustrators of 19th century America. In my research, I have focused on Thomas Nast's attitudes towards 19th century immigration, specifically the Irish and the Chinese. I will argue that over the course of his career, Nast became an illustrator who was both ahead of his time and a product of his time in regards to his attitudes towards the Irish and the Chinese. So, who was Thomas Nast? Thomas Nast was born on September 27, 1840 in Landau, Germany. At the age of six, he and his family moved to New York. While he performed poorly in school, his artistic talent showed early on, and in 1859, his illustrations began appearing in issues of Harper's Weekly. Three years later, he became a staff illustrator for Harper's Weekly before leaving in 1886 to pursue other interests. While working for Harper's Weekly, he became known for his illustrations that focused on political and social topics, such as the Civil War, slavery, and Christmas, before receiving national acclaim for his fight against political corruption, specifically the corruption of William Boss Tweed. His work has awarded him the recognition of being the father of the modern political cartoon. However, it is his illustrations about immigration that tend to get overlooked, and these are the illustrations that I found to be the most intriguing. Before discussing Nast's stance on Irish and Chinese immigration, I will discuss the brief histories of Irish and Chinese immigration into the United States. Over a million Irish individuals came to America primarily to escape the Great Famine of 1845 in the hopes to provide a better life for themselves and their families. Unfortunately, upon their arrival, they were easy targets of bigotry. As explained in the anthology of essays edited by Joseph Lee and Marion R. Casey, Americans found the Irish to be dirty, unintelligent, and unskilled. They also possessed a weakness for alcohol and brought many diseases with them. Furthermore, they were Catholic, which conflicted with the large Anglo-Saxon Protestant population in America at the time. For the most part, they struggled to find work in order to support their families, with the exception of the opportunities offered to them by William Tweed. As explained by Ignatieve in How the Irish Became White, the Irish began developing racist attitudes towards other minorities, such as African Americans and the Chinese, in order to fit in. Similar to the Irish, the influx of Chinese immigrants in the mid-19th century was one of the largest the United States had ever witnessed. Due to the California Gold Rush of 1848 and the construction of the First Continental Railroad, plenty of opportunities of employment and wealth were available. However, like the Irish, the Chinese faced similar resentment, as Miller explains in The Unwelcome Immigrant. This resentment ultimately culminated into the passing of the Chinese Exclusion Act in 1882, the first law passed by the United States prohibiting people from entering the country solely on the basis of race or nationality. When examining the work of Thomas Nast, 
it becomes clear what a complex man he was in regards to his opinions on immigration. Beginning with the Irish, it is clear through his illustrations that he shared the public's point of view and was under the influence of social Darwinism. In his drawings, such as The Usual Irish Way of Doing Things, Killing the Goose that Laid the Golden Egg, and The Ignorant Vote, Honors Are Easy, the Irish were portrayed as violent, ape-like, and primitive. Like the public, he opposed Catholicism due to its impact on the American public school system. Furthering his resentment towards them was their supposed alliance with William Tweed, who Nast was in direct conflict with due to suspicions of corruption. Ultimately, Nast was an opponent of the ignorance and mob mentality that the Irish represented. On the other hand, Nast's illustrations that focus on the Chinese were done in a much more positive light, showing his support for Chinese immigration and ultimately revealing a more progressive side to him. Sometimes the Chinese were portrayed as dignified individuals, such as in The Youngest Introducing the Oldest. Here, we see a Chinese diplomat being introduced to other European leaders by Colombia, who represents America. Other times, the Chinese were portrayed as victims of white abuse, such as in Pacific Chivalry. In this illustration, a Chinese individual is being restrained and whipped by a white individual. In some drawings, he simultaneously showed his sympathy towards the Chinese while showing his resentment towards the Irish. Looking closer at his illustration, The Chinese Question, you can see an Irishman among the white mob in the background. As I came across more of Nast's illustrations, it became clear that Nast was in fact tolerant of almost all races, ethnicities, and nationalities. This is best shown by his illustration, Uncle Sam's Thanksgiving Dinner, published on November 20th, 1869. The cartoon shows a large group of individuals, among whom are a Chinese family, an Irishman, and Columbia, gather around a table to enjoy a Thanksgiving feast as equals. Although the Irishman pictured still possesses some primitive physical features, the cartoon still has a positive tone, depicting Nast's progressive side. It serves as proof that Nast was a complex individual when it came to his perspectives on immigration. Thomas Nast stood out as simultaneously challenging and encouraging the growing presence of xenophobia and social Darwinism in the 19th century, while working as an illustrator for Harper's Weekly. His work proves that he was a man ahead of his time, supporting progression and reform, especially when representing the Chinese, while also being heavily influenced by social Darwinism and personal beliefs when depicting the Irish. Today, Nast's work is used as an insight into the American mindset of the 19th century. Personally, I find Nast to be the most interesting figure I have ever studied, and I look forward to conducting more research on his life for my final research project. Thank you for listening.